हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द क्लास गाइस हेलो स्नेहा हाउ आर यू ऑल राइट वेलकम 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 वी हैव स्टार्टेड द क्लास स्नेहा नॉट टू वरी सो वील बी डूइंग पार्ट्स टू मॉडर्नाइजेशन टुडे वील जस्ट वेट फॉर फाइव मिनट्स लेट मोर पीपल कम इन एंड देन वील स्टार्ट मैंने आई थिंक एक सेशन लिया था बट आई टू एंड इट अर्ली बिकॉज ऑफ सम टेक्निकल इशूज इट वर हैपनिंग सो आई स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग इट सेल्फ मैं वापस से ही शुरू करती हूँ आई स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द वेरी बिगिनिंग इट सेल्फ सो लेट्स जस्ट वेट फॉर टू मिनट्स लेट मोर पीपल कम इन एंड देन वील स्टार्ट So guys this is a little difficult chapter so whenever you have any doubts please feel free to ask bina puche please chapter mein aage mat padhiyega because uh, it will be a little issue you will not be able to understand it so we'll do that So we'll just wait for two minutes, and um, if more people are coming in, otherwise, if not, then we'll start with our lesson. So all those who are coming in, guys, welcome to the class. सो आई थिंक वी शुड स्टार्ट हम लोग शुरू करते हैं लेट्स यू स्टार्ट विद आर लेसन सो सी वन आई वाई स्टार्ट एनी लेसन विथ यू ऑल आई हैव ऑलवेज टोल्ड यू दैट इफ इट इज हिस्ट्री यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड और वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द सोर्सेज विच आर देयर टू अंडरस्टैंड हिस्ट्री राइट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट वट एवर टाइम पीरियड वी आर स्टडिंग वॉट आर द सोर्सेज डू वी हैव हमारे पास क्या सोर्सेज हैं टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट टाइम पीरियड सो वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट चाइना एंड जपैन एज टू हाउ इट बिकेम द कंट्री दैट इट इज टूडे वी हैव टू फोकस ऑन द सोर्सेज वी हैव टू फोकस ऑन वॉट on what writings what historical writings do we have to understand as to how it became the country that it is today so let's just start with our sources first now both china and japan have a long tradition of historical writing long in the sense they have always focused on historical writing because past was seen as a way in which the present rulers would be judged so whatever uh, a previous ruler had done that plus what the present ruler is doing all that combined together would provide the standards on which a ruler is to be judged uh, on how he is doing what he is doing kya kar rahe hain nahi kar rahe hain all of that so so what is happening here so that is why the rulers would establish official departments unke official departments hote the that would be there to maintain records and to write dynastic histories so that is the reason dynastic histories would be written uh, previous rulers ke jitne bhi rulers us dynasty ke hain unke pure itihas ke bare mein likha jata tha just so that the present ruler has something uh, on which he could depend jis pe wo depend kar sakta hai jis pe wo wapas ja sakta hai to see whether he is going right or wrong or whatever so all of these things were taken care so that is why they had official departments they had bureaus which would be maintaining records and writing the dynastic histories we have one person whose name as sima qian now he is considered to be one of the greatest historian of early china japan also got influenced by china and started giving a lot of importance to historical writing one of the first acts of the meiji government uh, when they came uh, they came when they came to power in japan was was to establish an official bureau that would be collecting and writing records uh, that was in 1869 so that is why why do you think that happened because they got so influenced by the chinese people uh, the chinese culture of historical writing they also started giving equal importance to maintaining records to keeping records and writing uh, and keeping uh, history records of historical events so uh, we can clearly understand that because uh, they keeping records of each and every thing 
literary word and literary achievement was something that was highly valued in this particular empire in this particular culture especially chinese and japanese culture aap aage ja ke jab dekhoge aap padhoge you will also understand how schooling was important how literacy was important for each and every individual be it a boy or a girl dono ke liye equally important tha ki important tha ki wo padhe likhe ho educated ho at least they could read and write so since it has so 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 much of so much of importance is being given to literary word and literary achievements there was a plethora of written material which was present so there would be scholarly writings there would be historical writings there would be religious tracts popular literature novels all sorts of books were available now why do you think how do you think this book is available now because of the plethora of literature which is available we can safely conclude that printing and publishing was an important industry but at the same time these industries might have been really cheap why because agar ye cheap nahi honge then itna plethora of literature produce karna would be really difficult because then not everyone would be able to afford it apart from this we have some scholarship Uh, so we have some modern scholars also so we have chinese intellectuals like liang qichao and kumi kuna take they are the pioneers of modern history in japan so sima kyan was the one who was writing about the ancient history we also have liang qichao and kumi kuna take he is writing about inhone kis cheez ke bare mein likha hai they have written they are the pioneers of modern history of japan so modern history of japan has been actually written by these two historians uh apart from this we also have some foreign travelers jaise ki marco polo we have mateo risi so all of these people traveled to china and japan and they have left a vivid description of this area of this place of this culture and since they are foreign travelers they always have a third person perspective and this third person perspective can be trusted because they do not have any biases as such um also we have one more scholarship which is the writings of the christian missionaries who usually came with the european world who usually came with the britishers uh, now their history has to be focused on with a little uh, clarification thoda sa satark rehna hai hame why because we have to understand that they are christian missionaries the only thing they want to do is to spread the message of christianity and to convert as many people as possible so uh, they might not have been able to understand the actual japanese and chinese culture so we have to be a little careful if we are focusing on chinese and japanese history from the christian missionaries perspective if there's any doubt uh, till where we have done now you could please tell me i hope everyone has understood till here is there any doubt anything you guys did not understand is everything okay guys if there's something you do not understand you can tell me you can tell me in the live chat is this okay i hope everyone has understood okay moving on now we also have some english scholarship so we have people like uh, george sansom and joseph needham they have also written a lot on chinese and japanese history and obviously they have written in the english language so we have english scholarship jo hai hame wo inse milti hai apart from this lot of chinese and japanese indigenous sources have been translated into english 
सो नाउ वी हैव इनफ मटीरियल एक्चुअली हमारे पास बहुत सारा मटीरियल अवेलेबल है टू अंडरस्टैंड द चाइनीज एंड जैपनीज हिस्ट्री नॉट ओनली डू वी हैव द इंडिजिनस मटीरियल वी हैव इंग्लिश स्कॉलरशिप्स वी हैव क्रिश्चन मिशनरीज द रिकॉर्ड विच बी लेफ्ट बाई दैम वी हैव फॉरन ट्रेवलर्स वी हैव indigenous travelers we have indigenous writers whose uh, whose works have been translated also so we have plethora 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 of documents actually to understand the chinese and japanese history so this is as far as your sources are concerned now we look at the geographical expanse and then we move on to the political system that was there in china and japan now this section that is about naito conan this i will teach once i finish the chapter because ye jo hai ye chapter se related hai to understand this you'll have to first understand the chapter to wo thoda samajhne ke baad main aapko ye acche se explain kar paungi so we'll do that uh, once we are uh, done with it okay so let's shall we start so if we are to talk about the geographical expanse of china and japan Uh, let's first talk about the physical makeup as in the physicality the physical makeup of china and japan so they are physically in contrast with each other what do you mean by that they are physically contrast matlab ek dusre se bahut alag hai as far as the physical makeup is concerned china is a huge continental country it is made of different continents which uh, spans over different climatic zones so some area might be really hot some area might be really cold some might be humid some might be moderate and china actually has three river systems so we have the yellow river the yangtze river and the pearl river the yellow river and the yangtze river actually has been called as the sorrow of china you know why because initially during the chinese civilization yellow river and the yangtze river would flood a lot yes they did leave behind a fertile uh, a layer of fertile silt but initially it was really difficult to handle that flood we also have the pearl river which is the longest river in the world which is the third longest river in the world obviously the longest river is nile um agar hum dominant ethnic group ki baat kare so han is the dominant ethnic group and the language which is spoken is chinese but we have some minor nationalities such as we have the uighur we have hui we have manchu we have tibetans also and some other dialects such as uh, cantonese and shanghainese have also been spoken here so this is as far as language physical makeup and uh, the my, the majority community is concerned if you guys have any doubts agar aapko kuch bhi nahi samajh mein aa raha hai guys so please 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 point it out let me know if you did not understand something i will definitely try to clear that up <coughs> I hope everyone has understood everything till now. अभी तक तो किसी को होपफुली कोई डाउट नहीं है Any doubts, guys? You can um, tell me in the live chat session. Uh, if there's any point that you did not understand, कुछ भी है जो आपको नहीं समझ में आ रहा हो please आप जरूर बताइएगा so that I can clear up those doubts. Okay, I am sorry guys, I was not receiving your uh, comments. I have just received them. Uh, okay, Sneha has doubts in modeling the economy. Uh, okay, it is clear. हेलो हर्ष आई एम रियली सॉरी स्नेहा मुझे कमेंट्स दिख ही नहीं रहे थे मुझे अब कमेंट्स दिखने शुरू हुए हैं रियली वेरी सॉरी अबाउट दैट गाइस आई डू नॉट नो दिस ओके सो स्नेहा कुड यू प्लीज वेट फॉर सम टाइम टुवर्ड्स द एंड ऑफ द क्लास इन द लास्ट फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स मैं आपके ये सारे टॉपिक्स क्लियर कर दूंगी वुल दैट बी ओके हेलो हर्ष 
really very very sorry about this guys i just received all the comments i think i was not receiving them but now i am uh sneha if you're here i'm really very very sorry about this uh if you could just wait for some time i'll definitely clear your doubts okay all right ओके सो यहाँ तक किसी को डाउट नहीं है uh, स्नेहा आपका डाउट मैं लास्ट फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स में आई क्लियर दैट अप ओके ऑल राइट नाउ इस फार एज चाइनीज फूड इज कंसर्न ग्रुप में नोटिफिकेशन डली हुई है बच्चे आई वॉल्ट ही पुट इट मिल नहीं रही क्या मैंने डाली है आई थिंक आई मैं चेक कर लूंगी एक बारी uh, मैंने डाली थी बट मे बी आई मे बी देर सम नेटवर्क एर शायद इसलिए गया नहीं होगा दैट इज नॉट ऑल्सो रिसीविंग द कॉमेंट्स हियर चलो ओके सो एज फार एज द फूड इज कंसर्न अगर हम खाने की बात करें सो आई डोंट थिंक आई थिंक इंडियंस इन चाइनीज और इंडियंस आई थिंक जितना चाइनीज खाना खाते हैं उतना कोई भी नहीं खाता होगा so the best known cuisine is from the cantonese cuisine which is southern china it has dim sums pastries dumplings and i hope uh, aap sabko pata hoga which is called momos jo i think hum sab on a daily basis khate hain so, this is what it was now in the north uh, wheat is the staple food wheat jo hai wo staple food hai and they it's actually very spicy because they use a lot of szechuan spices now these szechuan spices have been brought by the buddhist monks actually 15th century mein wo leke aaye the to unka jo khana hai wo bahut hi spicy hai it's very fiery cuisine and eastern china has both rice and wheat uh, so sneha we have a group uh, we have a telegram group uh, where i share all the details and everything else <clears throat> so that group uh, that is the, that is the group harsh is talking about uh, i'm sorry harsh i might not have uh, shared maine ho sakta hai galti se shayad dusre group mein share kar diya ho ya fir maine shayad nahi share kiya ho i'll just check but i will definitely remember to share anything else mujhe main acche se yaad rakhungi i'll uh, definitely share all the links with you guys okay don't worry chalo uh i hope no doubts still here is this clear guys um yahan tak sabko clear hai anything anyway you want some explanation so moving on harsh aapko i hopefully sab kuch clear hai rohit everyone else i hope there's no doubt if there is you can tell me okay moving on <clears throat> now so let us talk about japan the physical makeup and everything else really sorry harsh main pakka yaad rakhungi uh main actually i'll tell you the reason that i don't uh, sometimes put it in the group is uh sham ka hoga to i'll definitely put it but i feel like you guys have classes at this time aur fir obligation ho jata hai na kabhi kabhi <laughs> clear attend karna so that is the reason but since you're interested in youtube classes main definitely dal dungi theek hai don't worry about it okay so let us talk about japan now so japan is actually made up of four big islands which is honshu kyushu shikoku and hokkaido uh, then we have one uh, which is on the southernmost part which is the okinawa chain now this is a chain of islands and this has the same latitude as the bahamas which is in america now 50% of japan is actually located in earthquake prone zone 
So I'm pretty sure you must have heard about Jap Japan facing uh, earthquakes on an annual basis. And these earthquakes are not small ones. These are actually very destructive earthquakes. As in buildings have been destroyed, roads have been destroyed. It's like that. And that is why the architecture... <clears throat> That is why their architecture is so influenced that influenced by this uh, thing which that is they are in earthquake prone zone. So you will see how vertical gardens have been constructed. So all of that is actually just a way. It is a way so that they can handle these things which is earthquake ko handle kar sake, fine? because they can't have huge trees. Uh, 12th ki class Abhilasha I think kal hogi. At the same time, at 3.30. Hello, Randhir. How are you? Hey, syllabus nahi bata rahe? Aisa kaise ho sakta hai? That's weird. Okay. So the population, if you talk about the Japanese, as I talk about the population in Japan, they're mostly Japanese, but we have a small uh, minority called the Ainu community. We also have some Koreans who were brought in as laborer when Korea was actually a Jap Japanese colony. Now, Japan does not have a culture of animal rearing. Why? Because again, it's very prone to earthquake. <clears throat> And that is why they can't have these huge areas cleared for pasturing. Unko animal rearing ka condition, tradition will lack karte hai. Uh, and since they're mostly islands, so they don't have such uh, huge, huge, huge areas also. They're mostly dependent on fishing because they're, they're an island country. So what happens, there's rice is their stable crop and fish is a major source of protein. I'm pretty sure you must have heard of this dish called sushi, which is raw fish uh, in rice which is eaten I think everywhere so that's one of the Japanese dishes <clears throat> Kyun displacing energy is kyun dar lag uh, Harsh why are you so scared of that so uh, I hope China and Japan ka physical makeup sabko samaj mein aa gaya hai uh, should we move on to the uh, political system then I hope there's no doubt, guys. If there is, you can please tell me. Acha, okay. So practice Karlo Hush because you never know they might uh, give it to you. You might get the entire syllabus also. Is this clear guys? Should we move ahead? Aage bade, should we come to the uh, political system of Japan? I hope rest of the part is clear. Sneha, her, should we move ahead? Okay, Rohit ko clear hai, all right. <clears throat> okay, so let's move ahead. Let's talk about the political system of Japan. So, um, there's some major players in the political system of Japan. So, what is the who's the first major player? So, first of all, we have the emperor who is living in Kyoto. Kyoto is a place, but by the 12th century, okay, bye, Harsh, take care. Bye bye. <clears throat> All right. So uh, the emperor ruled from Kyoto, uh, but from 12th century onwards, actually, emperor had just become like the titular head. 
he had no real power the real power was actually with the shoguns so who is the second player in the political system we have the shoguns shoguns are actually military commanders shoguns kon hai shoguns are military commanders who have a lot of power and uh, the emperor has been designated as just the titular head so we have the shoguns is the next player who have a lot of power they are the military commanders and there was this family a family named the tokugawa family they held the position of shoguns for almost two centuries from 1603 to 1867 i think it's more than two centuries uh, so they have uh, they've held the position of shoguns who the tokugawa family hello banupriya how are you So this is the second player in the political system of Japan. So who is it? We have the shoguns. Shoguns are the military commanders, and the real power is actually in the hands of the shoguns, and they're just governing in the name of the king. Next, what we have is the daimyos. Who are the daimyos? Daimyos are actually the dominion lords. Let me explain this. So what has happened? The entire country of Japan has been divided. into 250 domains uh you can call this as district also aap isko district samajh sakte ho you can understand this as cities or as states or simple administrative units now these 250 domains have been put under 250 lords 250 daimyos and they are responsible for governing those 250 daimyos right but now what has happened अगर ये जो डैमियोज हैं ये जो लॉर्ड्स हैं अगर वो अपने अपने जगह पे रहेंगे इफ दे स्टे इन देयर ओन डोमेन डेफिनेटली द शोगन्स कुड हैव नो पावर हियर राइट तो शोगन्स को क्योंकि पावर चाहिए था दे वांटेड एब्सोल्यूट कंट्रोल ओवर दीज डोमेन्स व्हाट दे डिड वाज दे ऑर्डर दीज डोमिनियन लॉर्ड्स कि आप जा करके एडो में रहें एडो इज मॉडर्न डे टोक्यो so they were asked to live in the capital of edo leaving their uh, leaving their domains empty for long periods of time now since the domains were empty for long period of time the actual power was then taken over by the shoguns so shoguns ne kya kiya shoguns ne wo pura jo dominion hai pura jo uh, dominion unka area hai usko capture kar liya and they were the ones who were actually ruling because jo lords hain they are not in their own domains they are far 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 away from their domains so they have no control over their domains the control has been taken over by the shoguns the next player in this political system we have the samurais the samurais are actually the warrior class uh, you can call them as soldiers and they had to serve the ruling elite they served the shoguns and the daimyos ab <coughs> daimyos jo hai wo to actually they are not here they are not uh, even in the dominial areas ye log kahan pe hain where are they located they are in edo right and who is looking after the administration of the daimyos it has been looked after by the shoguns so actually the samurai is here who are they serving indirectly directly or indirectly they are serving the shoguns itself right is there any doubts in any of the points here anything that you did not understand please let me know <clears throat> कुछ भी अगर नहीं समझ में आएगा इस तो प्लीज जरूर बताइएगा दिस माइट बी लिटिल कंफ्यूजिंग सो इफ यू हैव नॉट अंडरस्टूड समथिंग एनीथिंग फॉर दैट मैटर प्लीज डू लेट मी नो Anything you guys did not understand in the political system, please. <clears throat> Zuru, tell me.
ओके सो आगे बढ़ते हैं हम लेट्स मूव अहेड सो ऑल राइट इन द सिक्सटीन सेंचुरी सम मेजर चेंजेस स्टार्टेड टेकिंग प्लेस इन जापान वॉट वर दोज मेजर चेंजेस ना फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द पेजेंट्री वॉज डिजर्व वट यू मीन बाई दिस see the peasantry also wielded swords they also had some form of weapons so that was taken away from them the reason was so so as to prevent the peasantry from revolting against the people um samurai as spartans you can understand them as spartans rohit yes absolutely samurai could be understood as spartans equivalent keh sakte ho aap unko ek dusre ka yes So in the 16th century, there were some major changes which took place. So what were those changes? First of all, uh, the peasantry was disarmed. The peasantry also had some form of weapons with them. They might have a sword, they might have bow and arrow, but they were disarmed. Now only the samurais were allowed to carry swords. Why? What is the reason? First of all, they it it was done to ensure peace and order in the empire. Also. to prevent those frequent wars which were happening unko prevent karne ke liye the reason that is the reason that the peasantry was disarmed now secondly the second change which happened was that the daimyos uh, or the lords they were requested unse kaha gaya ki aap please ja kar ke apne domain ke capital mein rahe and they were also given a lot of autonomy as far as uh as far as their uh, governance and their administration is concerned in their own daimyos unke daimyos mein unse kaha gaya ki aap apne uh, wahan pe uske capital mein rahe and they were given a lot of autonomy there was a second change which uh, second change which took place there was a third change which happened now um japan had to make sure to have a good revenue base for that to establish a stable revenue base what they started doing was they started conducting land surveys they identified the owners of the land they identified who were the actual tax payers lands were graded in the sense uh on the basis of the productivity of the land how much the land can produce uh what is uh, what is the productivity what is the soil content what is the fertility of the soil how much the soil can produce on the basis of that the land was graded and a stable revenue base was ensured because of the stable revenue base because of the growing economy the population also started to grow and japan became one of the most populated cities in the world uh we have edo we have kyoto osaka these places actually had around 50000 population at that time which was quite a lot is there any doubts here guys you can tell me if there's anything you did not understand Anything you guys did not understand, please let me know. I will explain again. Okay. All right. Rohit says it's clear. Hmm. Let's move on then. Now. so uh, because of the stable economy it led to the growth of commercial economy what do you mean by commercial economy it led to the growth of trading activities so japan actually imported a lot and because they were importing and exporting and all of that was happening because trade was happening within the empire also and outside the empire as well so this created the need to create some credit system credit system in the sense banking checks all of these credit systems were created now because of the growth of commercial economy since trading activity was important money was considered as uh, considered important a person's merit was not on the basis of his family or 
in what status is in what class has he been born into nothing like that the focus was actually on his credibility and on a person's capability so person's status was judged according to his credibility and according to his capability and because of this there were a lot of people who pro- prospered enough to become a uh, good merchants to become rich and good merchants and we have a class of merchants coming in the towns and the cities and since they had money and they were respected they also patronized arts and theater to unhone ek actually ek vibrant culture ko grow karne mein madad kiya where art and culture literature all of these things were really valued so as people enjoyed reading it became possible for gifted writers to earn a living solely by writing good evening ashish how are you so <clears throat> i've already pointed out that how reading was uh, one of the major activities which the japanese people undertook uh, why was the major activities because a plethora of reading material was available there was religious literature there was political literature there were novels there were prose poetry lots and lots of books were available and since there was this culture of reading since the common people enjoyed reading uh, it became possible for gifted writers to just earn their living by writing they did not have to supplement their earnings by doing something else and in edo the books were so actually so cheap that you could rent a book for the price of a noodle matlab bowl of noodle ke paise mein aap ek book rent kar sakte ho this actually shows us this gives us a glimpse into the scale of printing in the scale of publishing and all this would have happened why do you think they would publish so much or why do you think they would print so much that can only happen when people were really interested so it actually gives us a glimpse into uh, the reading culture of japan that how people were so 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 interested in reading and writing and reading different kinds of books okay welcome to the class ashish uh no uh vijay this is not for class uh 12 this is for 11th I will definitely take class ट्वेल्थ also. Don't worry. मैं उसके लिए भी classes आपकी definitely लूँगी I think tomorrow um, you'll have a class for class ट्वेल्थ uh, Don't worry about that. Today I'm taking for class इलेवेंथ but uh, we'll also have class ट्वेल्थ Don't worry about it. Okay? All right. So let us talk about uh, the economy of Japan. Japan actually was considered very rich. What is the reason? Because Japan was exporting lots and lots of luxury goods from India and from different parts of the world, China also. So from China they were importing silk and from India they were exporting all sorts of textile. And since they were not exporting anything kyunki wo hame kuch de nahi rahe the, they had to pay for these goods in the form of gold and silver. which actually put a lot of strain on their gold and silver reserves to bahut zyada reserve unka jo gold and silver reserve tha wo actually khatam hone lag gaya uh, they lost their bullion uh, economy so that is why the tokugawa put restrictions on the export of precious metal to tokugawa ne kaha ki hum jab tak ek self sufficient economy na ban jaye unless and until we develop whatever we are importing jo bhi cheez hum import kar rahe hain usko hum khud ke liye na develop kar le tab tak hum na import karenge tab tak na hum export karenge right so they this was the first step in becoming a self sufficient economy so <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> so uh they first of all they developed the silk industry in nishijin and it was so well developed that it actually came to be known as the best in the world and there were some other developments as well there was increased use of money 
there was growth of stock market all of that was happening is this clear guys if there's any doubt please do let me know इससे एनी थिंग यू डिड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड आपको इसमें कुछ भी अगर नहीं समझ में आया हो तो प्लीज जरूर बताइएगा ताकि हम उसको क्लियर कर लें स्नेहा आई यू हियर Sneha are you here if you here please let me know i think you had a few doubts um in modernizing the economy industrial workers if you could please tell me if you here i will explain that Okay, so I think I'm going to start with a uh, major restoration. So, um, after, uh, so once uh, the Tokugawa family has said that they're not going to open up the economy unless and until they develop, they become a self-sufficient economy, which has happened. Japan has become a self-sufficient economy in the sense. they have developed uh, silk they have developed stock market they are already into all forms of commercial activities now what is happening here okay so sneha are you here aapko kis uh, section mein doubt tha if you could please tell me that i will clear that up we have 15 minutes now so guys we will stop uh, not stop here uh sneha had some doubts in this chapter so i'm just clearing that main wo clear karungi and then we will if we have time we will continue with major restoration also uh sneha aapke doubts kis mein the modernizing the economy that is this is where you had a doubt okay so uh, is there any particular doubt or uh, did you not understand the whole thing okay all right uh, let's begin then so one of the major important um aspects of the meiji restoration was actually to modernize the economy right if you remember they have stopped uh, any any sort of import and export they have developed uh, japan to be a self sufficient economy it was only with the coming in of matthew perry that they finally opened up japan's economy to the rest of the world right so how do you think they modernized the economy of japan so that it could stand at par with the western world 
So first step that was taken was funds were raised by levying agricultural taxes. Japan's first railway line between uh, Tokyo and the port of Yokohama was built in 1817-72. So how do you how do you create funds? You you have to have funds. The government has to have funds to invest it somewhere, isn't it? And how the government uh, creates funds by collecting taxes. Aaj hum government ko taxes pay karte hain. That is why the government has funds to invest it in different uh, different propositions, different projects, right? तो यहाँ पे भी उन्होंने यही किया दे स्टार्टेड कलेक्टिंग फंड्स बाय लेविंग ऑन एग्रीकल्चरल टैक्सेस सो टैक्सेस वर कलेक्टेड एंड दो टैक्सेस वर यूज्ड फर्स्ट इन व्हाट व्हाट वाज द फर्स्ट प्रोजेक्ट द फर्स्ट प्रोजेक्ट वाज द रेल द जापान रेलवे लाइन फर्स्ट रेलवे लाइन वॉज कंस्ट्रक्टेड बिटवीन टोक्यो एंड योको नाउ वाई डू यू थिंक रेलवे इज सो इम्पॉर्टेंट जस्ट try to include it just try to understand it uh, from the industrial revolution point of view wahan pe railways kyu important tha for transportation of goods for transportation of people for trading activities ek jagah se dusri jagah ke hum saman pahunchana hai that to in a hurried manner uh, that to in time and for trading activities to continue we needed railways so that is why this is the first project they invented sorry they invested in so textile machinery was imported from europe foreign technicians were employed to train workers as well as to teach in universities and schools and japanese students were sent abroad taki apni economy ko modernize kar sake taki apni economy ko at par with the european world kar sake what did they start doing they first of all they imported a textile machinery from europe और राइट फॉरेन टेक्नीशियंस बाहर से बुलाए गए ताकि वो यहाँ के लोगों को जापानीज लोगों को ट्रेन कर सके देन दे वो ऑल्सो आस्ट टू गिव लेक्चर्स इन द यूनिवर्सिटीज सो दैट एवरी वन इन जापान कुड बी ट्रेन इन द मॉडर्न वेज ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल रेवोल्यूशन एंड जापानीज स्टूडेंट्स वो सेंट अप्रॉड ताकि वो वहाँ की चीज़ें सीख करके यहाँ ला सके और यहाँ पे उसको अप्लाई कर सके फाइन इन एटीन मॉडर्न बैंकिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन वो ऑल्सो लॉन्च आई ऑल अगर हम किसी भी इंडस्ट्रियल इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन की बात कर रहे हैं और इफ यू टॉकिंग अबाउट एनी फॉर्म ऑफ कमर्शियल एक्टिविटी वॉट वी नीड इज बैंकिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन इज इन डेट दैट इज वाई द बैंक ऑफ लंडन वॉज इस्टेब्लिश दैट इज वाई सो मेनी बैंक वो इस्टेब्लिश टू सपोर्ट इंडस्ट्रियल रेवोल्यूशन सो अगर जापान को अपनी इकॉनमी सपोर्ट करनी है तो उन्होंने क्या किया उन्होंने बैंकिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन क्रिएट किए विच कुड प्रोवाइड लोन्स विच कुड प्रोवाइड मनी टू द पीपल जस्ट इन केस दे वॉन्टेड टू सेटअप सम बिजनेस so we have companies like mistibushi we have companies like sumitomo so these companies are actually still there hai na unko subsidies di gayi unko tax benefits diye gaye taki wo ek strong company ban sake jo japan ki indigenous company ho aur japan ko represent kar sake fine there was this family there was zaibastu their large business organization controlled by individual families मतलब जैसे हमारे पास टाटा बिरला अंबानी है ये लोग बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कंट्रोल करते हैं दिस बीइंग कंट्रोल बाय इंडिविजुअल फैमिलीज इज इंट इट सो इन्होंने अपनी इकोनॉमी को डोमिनेट किया कब तक टिल द सेकंड वर्ल्ड वॉर इज दिस क्लियर नाउ स्नेहा दीज आर जस्ट स्टेप्स विच वर टेकन टू मॉडर्नाइज द इकोनॉमी दैट इज इट इज दिस क्लियर गुड इवनिंग रानी हाव यू स्नेहा आपको समझ में आया बच्चे हाँ रानी स्पेशल क्लासेस चलती हैं वी वी हैव बीन हैविंग देन वी बीन हैविंग हैविंग देम सिंस इन द लास्ट वीक इस वीक में अभी नहीं हुई है बट आई थिंक सैटरडे को वी हैव अ स्पेशल क्लास स्नेहा आपको एक एक पॉइंट क्लियर है बच्चे किसी पॉइंट में कोई डाउट
okay so uh because okay this is much clear all right now because of growing economy the population also somewhat increased so it was 35 million in 1872 it went on to 55 million so the population also started increasing a lot the government had to take some measures to reduce the population pressure so to reduce the population pressure the government actively encouraged migration first to the northern islands of hokkaido which have been largely autonomous areas where mostly the ainu community lived then to brazil and hawaii which as well as growing colonial empire of japan so what did they do to control the population pressure they uh, pe- uh, the japanese government said that people have to migrate where first of all they said that you have to migrate to the northern island of hokkaido which was much 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 less populated because wahan pe sirf ek small community which is the ainu community that uh, they were living then unhone kaha that you have to migrate to hawaii and brazil hawaii and brazil were actually the colonial estates of japan japan ki colonies thi hawaii and brazil so people were asked to so that is where people were asked to move to these communities population increased but because the economy was very stable now since they had good economy they had enough money they could feed their children so that is why more children were being born kyunki ab har kisi ke paas itna paisa tha ki wo apne bacche ko ek achhi life achhi parvarish de sake and that is why the population started increasing As far as I remember, it was fa- found in 1692. Rani, which exactly date? Nahi aad hai, bache. I don't remember the exact date, but as far as I remember, it was 1692. Okay, Sneha. I hope this has been cleared up. so that is why they were asked to migrate to uh, hawaii and brazil which were the colonial empires which were colonies of japan aur wahan pe unko migrate karne ke liye kaha gaya the population increased the reason i've already told you so within japan there was a shift to towns as industries developed by 1925 21% of the population lived in cities by 1935 this figure went up to 32% बच्चे जो आपका क्वेश्चन है रानी वो आपको इंडस्ट्रियल रेवोल्यूशन वाले चैप्टर में मिलेगा इंडस्ट्रियल रेवोल्यूशन वाले चैप्टर में मिलेगा ओके ऑल राइट सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग ना बिकॉज द इंडस्ट्री स्टार्टेड डेवलपिंग पीपल फ्रॉम द रूरल एरिया स्टार्टेड शिफ्टिंग टू द अर्बन एरिया वेर दे वुड वर्क इन द इंडस्ट्रीज so by 1925 21% of the population were living in industries were living in towns and by 1935 within 10 years this figure went up to 32% matlab 10% zyada log jo hain ab wo kahan reh rahe hain cities mein reh rahe hain because the industries developed and people started migrating to these places so that they can find job they can find work they can find better living conditions and they could work in the industries clear okay so <clears throat> now we have to focus on uh industrial workers right So what is happening now? Since the industries are increasing, the number of people who were employed in manufacturing industries actually increased from seven lakh to almost four million in 1930. So 1870 there were around seven uh, lakh people, and it increased to around four million in 1930. Now most of them worked in units employing less than five people. and using neither machinery nor electric 
power. So most of these people, most of these industrial workers, they were working in units which were actually handloom units. मतलब वहाँ पे कम लोग employ होते थे और ना ही वो कोई electric उनकी जो machinery थी वो कोई electric power use नहीं कर रही थी. What do you mean by that? It was handloom. It was not power loom. So most of these people were employed in the handloom sectors. Over half of these employees were actually women. So most of the employees who were working in the industrial sectors were actually women and it was the women actually who organized the first modern strike in 1886 asking for better working conditions. Now why do you think women were employed? Because most of the men were away in the world wars, fighting in the world wars. That is why men ki jo population hai that was lesser and that is why women were uh women were most employed in the industries so in 1900 after 1900 the number of men began to increase but it was only in the 1930s that they began to outnumber women so once the wars ended once everything was peaceful then only the number of men began to increase in the industrial sector but it was not till the 1930s that they outnumbered women so women were always more as far as industrial workers are concerned now uh so as and when men begin to be employed as and when we had a huge number as in we had a huge population which was now available to work in the industrial sector the size of factories also began to increase earlier the factories did not need to be of huge sizes why because there was only a limited number of people who were working in the industries but now since they have a lot and lot of people who are working in the industries the size of the industries also begin to increase okay so <coughs> factories employing more than 100 workers just over 1000 in 1909 jumped over to 2000 then to 4000 then to around 5 lakh 50000 workshops uh were employed in less uh, so what we are seeing here is hum yahan pe kya dekh rahe hain ki pehle jo factories the which employed more than 100 workers unhone 1000 workers ko employ karna shuru kiya fir 2000 workers ko employ karna shuru kiya fir 4000 workers ko employ karna shuru kiya so much so as in you can see the number of employees are increasing kaise 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 badhte ja rahe hain how is how are they increasing because definitely the number of workshops are increasing the size of the workshops are increasing and the size of what the size of factories also are increasing is this clear any doubts here sneha yahan tak samajh aaya bachche aapko यहाँ पे ये कहा जा रहा है दैट इवन दो द साइज ऑफ द फैक्ट्रीज वर इंक्रीजिंग एंड इवन दो द नंबर ऑफ वर्कर्स दैट वर एम्प्लॉयड वर इंक्रीजिंग वट दिस सेइंग हियर इज दैट देर वर सम अराउंड फाइव लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड वर्कशॉप्स दैट वर स्टिल वर्किंग ऑन इन द हैंडलूम सेक्टर जो अभी भी हैंडलूम सेक्टर में काम कर रहे थे जिनके पास अभी भी लेस देन फाइव एम्प्लॉयज ही होते थे ठीक है तो अभी भी ये कहा जाए दैट इवन दो इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन वाज इंक्रीजिंग इवन दो इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन वाज बिकमिंग द नेम ऑफ द एरा देर वाज स्टिल सम वर्कशॉप्स नॉट सम अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ वर्कशॉप्स देर वाज स्टिल इन द हैंडलूम सेक्टर जो अभी भी सिर्फ पांच से ज्यादा लोगों को एम्प्लॉय नहीं कर रहे थे दे वर नॉट यूजिंग एनी ह्यूज मशीनरी दे वर स्टिल वर्किंग इन द हैंडलूम सेक्टर क्लियर हेलो आदिल हाव यू Now, um, this industrial sector, 
In this industrial sector also, the emperor was treated, this was a strong patriarchal system. How a strong patriarchal system? Why? In here also, the emperor and the owner of the industry was treated as a family patriarch in the sense he was the head, he would be deciding everything, he would be taking all the decisions and people have to agree to him, right? So this is how they sustained nationalism. This is how they sustained their aggressive nationalism by uh, making sure that everyone listens to their emperor and everyone listens to their factory owners. Taki ek strong patriarchal system bane jaha pe hum apne ghar ke bado ki or especially ghar ke mardo ki jo baat hai wo sunne. Fine? Now, the rapid and unregulated growth of industry and the demand for natural resources such as timber led to environmental destruction. A lot of environmental destruction was caused because of the growing of industries. Since this happened, there was environmental destruction, there was deforestation. So Tanaka Shozu, elected to the first House of Representatives, launched the first agitation against industrial pollution in 1897 with 800 villagers in mass protest forcing the government to take action. So ek, uh, there was this person, Tanaka Shozu, Joki, he was elected as the first member of the House of Representatives, like the Lok Sabha, and he launched a movement launch kiya where he wanted to fight against industrial pollution and force the government to take action. This is what it is. Is it, is it clear? Industrial workers, do you understand Sneha, I hope everything is clear. Other class of end hone wale is just about to end now. Most welcome Sneha. I hope every point was clear. If there's any doubt in any of the points, you can still tell me. Chalo. Okay guys, I will end the class now. But before I go, I want to tell you about all the things which is happening on an academy right now. So you're already familiar with your iconic subscription. Uh, you get a personal mentor who is responsible for your doubts. So aapke jitne bhi doubts hai, that person would be responsible for solving your doubts on a regular basis. Uh, <clears throat> we'll have live doubt solving sessions. Weekly report is provided. Parent Connect is there. You also get a study planner. Apart from this, you get all the benefits of PLUS. Adil, the class is about to end now. Class, which is starting with Shiru Huiti, now it's about to end. Okay, what are you not understanding? Tell me. So, we also have some batches, individual batches, which have been launched. So, there's uh, an individual humanities batch where I'll be teaching you history. We also have batch called Optionals Made Easy, where uh, we will be covering all our optional papers like psychology, computer science, informatics practices and Hindi. So uh, I will be teaching you psychology on this platform. We And anyone who is in science and commerce, please do inform them about the crash course batch, which is there for science and commerce classes and the revisathon. We are also very proud to announce the subjective test series for class 11th and 12th. This is the pen it down series. Jahape, it happens on every weekend. You will give a subjective test series for history, political science, geography. Um, there are special uh, teachers designated who will correct these papers. Then there will be a doubt clearing session where the entire paper with the answers will be discussed. We also have another batch called Let's Crack NCRT English for 11th and for 12th, which will be taken by Minakshi Dhal, Shipra Ma'am and Vandana Bajaj Ma'am. 
so guys i think this is a very good time to take up your subscription use my code nikki life use this code take up your subscription you can either choose plus or iconic take it for longer durations because then whatever monthly payment you have to do is very less and you will be sorted for a very long time and uh, if the subscription prices increase it will not uh, affect you so use my code nikki live n i c k y l i v e as it is given jaise diya hua hai without any gaps and everything in caps lock use this code take your subscription join the plus batches it is much more effective uh live on an academy uh, for class 11th are you asking for special classes neha <clears throat> Bye, Banu Priya. Take care. Oh, uh, hello, Sneha. I am about to end the class now. So, okay. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for meeting me here. Thank you so much for coming to the classes. So, are you talking about the special classes, live for special class, or plus class? स्पेशल क्लास आई थिंक वुड बी ऑन अ सैटरडे सैटरडे को छः बजे छः बज के दस मिनट में हमारी एक स्पेशल क्लास है सो आई एल बी कमिंग लाइव देन फॉर स्पेशल क्लासेस प्लस क्लासेस एवरी डे एम लाइव फ्रॉम एट फोर्टी फाइव ओके थैंक यू सो मच गाइज थैंक यू सी यू ऑल बाय बाय टेक केयर uh for plus classes it's monday to friday at 8:45 for history and special classes uh, also mostly it's at 7 uh 6 or 7 but is week nahi hai hamari classes we'll have a class on saturday theek okay? hai so for history plus class it's monday to friday at 8:45 Bye Rohit take care Bye Adil Today I am uh I'm doing past to modernization there also so I'll continue with that ओके स्नेहा ओके ऑल राइट बाय गाइस सी यू